In this video, we're going to show you how to create a project, upload data to it, and share the project with your collaborators on the DNA Nexus platform. The first thing I'm going to do is create a new project, and I'm just going to call this project SKBR3 because that's the cell line I'm studying. Now, I can choose different billing accounts, but right now the default is just my own user. If you're part of an organization, then other billing accounts will be available to you as well, and you can also set additional ones in the settings. There's also optional settings like a description for the project, and there's different ways to restrict access and to allow public access, but all of these settings can be changed later. So I'm just going to first create a project here. So let's go take a look at the settings. And in the settings, you can see all those things that you could change before we created the project as well. So if you hover over the question mark, it'll tell you what these different policies mean, but they have to do with who can access the project, copy data, delete data, and download data. We can also change the description for the project and we can deal with billing accounts. So again, our default is just the user that you are on right now, which for me is Diana. And if you have an org, you can set billing for that too. So now let's go upload a file to our project. So I'm going to click on manage to get back to where we can see our data. And right now there's nothing in there. So I'm going to first click on add data. In here, there's different ways to add data to your project. We can upload data straight from our computer or even drop it onto this field. And that's going to upload the data straight onto the platform. You can also click on server. Here you can upload via a URL. So if you have a link to an FTP site or files that are stored on some kind of public server, you can put the URL in here and it'll upload to your project. You can also get data from another project. And here we have some publicly available data sets to choose from. So we have some data that's publicly available and it's on a website. So I'm going to go over there, get the download URL for that data and then upload it to the DNA Nexus platform here. So let's go over to this other tab where I have this website. And at the very bottom of this, I have a URL here. And if I right click on that and say copy link address, it'll give me the URL that I need in order to be able to upload that data to DNA Nexus. So we come back here, I'm going to paste that URL in here and then click on add data. And when I do that, it'll start uploading the data onto the DNA Nexus platform into this project. Even after we close the window, the upload is still going on. And we can actually go over to the monitor tab here and see that the file is currently waiting to upload. And then once that job is finished, I'll get a notification that the job has finished and that'll be up here in our notifications. In addition to SKBR3, I also have another project that I'm working on. So I'm going to go back to projects up here and create a new project. And this is for a study on a congenital form of blindness called LCA. So I'm just going to create that project. And here we actually have some publicly available data that I want to copy into this project. So I'm going to go back up to projects again. And under resources and featured here, there's different projects that are available to any users on DNA Nexus. These are publicly available files that DNA Nexus sponsors to let you experiment with the platform. And one of the projects is exome analysis demo. So if I go in here, then I can actually take some of this data. I'm going to go into input here. And there's two data files here that I'm interested in copying over into my own project. So I'm going to select these two files. And right now, I just want to copy them over into my project. So I click on Copy. And here we have our different projects listed. So I'm going to pick LCA, because these files should belong to that project. And while I'm in here, I can actually create a new folder as well. So I want to do that, because I want to keep my data well organized. And I just want to call this uh, reads, because these are going to be the raw reads. And so now I have that folder selected. I'm going to say copy into this folder. So now that publicly available data is going to be copied into my project. Now notice that these were copied over immediately. It already says that they're done. And that's because the data is already living on the DNA Nexus platform. And because it's sponsored for you, that data does not cost you anything. And it's copied immediately because we didn't actually copy the data. 
It's just something that you have a link to now that you can use in your own projects. So we click done and, and now we're gonna go over and look at our new project and we can see in here in the LCA project that the data is already in here in our reads folder. So now that I have some data in here in my LCA project, I wanna share this project with somebody else. So I'm gonna go up and click the share button. And I have a friend named Amy and her username is Amy on the platform too, which is very convenient. So now I wanna explain a little bit about these different levels of data access. So if I make Amy a viewer, then she can only view and download the data. She can't mess up anything in my project. If I let her upload data, then she can just upload data and view and download, but she can't actually run any jobs or do any analyses or otherwise incur charges in the project. If I make her a contributor, then she can do all those things. She can manage the data, she can run analyses, and she can upload data. She can even delete data. If I wanna give her administrator access, then she can edit the membership of the project and invite other people. And she would also be able to edit the settings of the project itself, such as changing the billing. So I'm just gonna give her uploader access because Amy is working in the sequencing core and she's gonna be putting data into this project, but she doesn't really need to be working with any of the data other than just uploading it. So I'm gonna add Amy. And here we can see that we have a list of the people who have different levels of access. So you can always manage that and I can remove Amy later if I don't like her anymore. In addition to sharing the whole project, I can also share individual files. And I can do that by creating a download URL. If I select this file, I can go over and hit the download button or I can right click and say download. From this screen, I can decide to download the data directly onto my computer, which will start immediately, or I can create a download URL. I can then copy that URL and send it to a friend, or I can use it to download it from the command line if I want. Anyone who has this URL would be able to download the data without logging into the platform, so you should only send this URL to people you trust with your data. So that's it for this video. In the next one, we're gonna talk about how to run an app on the DNA Nexus platform.